I want to take a minute to tell you guys about our Patreon page and all of the great stuff that we offer for our pledges. As you guys know, Sleeperwire is a charity working towards the prevention and treatment of chronic Lyme disease. As a Patreon pledge, here's what you can get. The Draft Genius Draft Kit PDF with rankings for all sorts of leagues, priority answers on the live mail sack shows, early access to the Sunday Blitz every Sunday morning during the season, the full Draft Genius Draft Kit, which includes rankings, articles, draft strategies, expert opinions, and more, a Sleeper Wire mug, a Sleeper Wire t-shirt, automatic entry to a listener league, and automatic entry to the Sleeper Wire Pro-Am. Your generosity will help make a difference. Visit www.patreon.com slash sleeperwire for more details. I challenge you to a duel. It's the only argument I need. I don't want to talk to you no more, you... You got a lot of nerve. Soon you will know what it is like to be defeated. Stop defending him, Sean! All right, let's go. Hey sleepers and welcome to the Sleeper Wire Great Debate Show where we do a fast debate between two players. I am your host Professor Chris as always and you can find me on Twitter at Seymour Sleeper Wire and today I have a very special guest just hands down one of the nicest guys in the fantasy football industry contributor to the football girl Pat Fitzmorris and you can follow him on Twitter at Fitz underscore FF. Pat how's it going man? Chris great. Good to talk to you again. We're starting to fire up the fantasy football season again, so uh, pretty pretty fun time of year. None of us has gotten anything wrong yet. So yeah, exactly. You're right. All of us are 100 percent accurate. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of accuracy, this is something that we talked about when you were on our show. I believe uh, back in March, when you know we really didn't have anything to talk about, but had you on our show, you were second in your in season rankings on Fantasy Pros for 2017 last year. But some news just came out about the pre-draft rankings. You want to drop that? Oh, uh, yeah, thanks. Um, so Fantasy Pros announced their pre their their draft accuracy last week, and I came in sixth out of whatever it is, 120 people or whatever. So I was kind of happy about that. Uh, you know, in season is nice, but in some ways, I, I almost consider the draft rankings a little more important, just because you're kind of uh, charting, helping chart the course. For anyone who follows you so uh good to know my information wasn't totally uh terrible last year <laughs> yeah, absolutely <laughs> absolutely and uh well now people have an even easier way to uh hear your fantasy analysis right you got a new podcast fits on fantasy yeah that just launched uh late june so uh you know we've done got four episodes under the belt and uh you know i'm uh Podcasting is a skill, and I guess it gets better as you go along. So hopefully, my first few weren't too terrible, and uh, you know we're going to keep it up and do it every week. And hopefully, people will look for that on SoundCloud, iTunes, or uh, at thefootballgirl.com. Yeah, next June on your one-year anniversary, you're going to look back and be like, "Wow, that first show was terrible." <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm already looking back and thinking the first show was probably pretty terrible. Uh, so, uh... <laughs> man, I, I remember the first one I was on. I listened to it not too long ago, and I was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe anybody listened to this episode." <laughs> I'm sure yours yeah. would be better than mine, but <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, Chris. We'll see. <laughs> uh, uh, well, congratulations. I'm glad to hear that things are moving for you. Uh, new podcast is pretty great. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the show here. So The Great Debate, this has become a pretty popular show of ours, so please go to iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher or wherever you are and drop us a five-star rating and leave us a nice review. That helps out the show and enables uh, Sleeper War to make a bigger difference. What we're going to be doing here is having an actual debate-style argument between two players. We're going to spend a couple minutes arguing for our player, 90 seconds for a rebuttal, and then we wrap it up with final thoughts, just like an actual debate. And I want to give you guys a heads up that the purpose of this is not for us to convince each other. I'm not trying to convince Pat of my player. He's not trying to convince me of his. What we're doing is trying to give you guys, the listeners, legitimate arguments for and against these guys so that you can make a more educated decision on who to draft You know, next month when draft season really kicks up. We're going back to wide receivers. So we did wide receivers in the first one. We did running backs last week. We're taking it back to wide receivers, and it's a question that I've seen all over Twitter, all over Fantasy Life, all over Sleeper Bot, well, I guess the newly renamed Sleeper app, and that is Josh Gordon or Adam Thielen. And I've got Gordon, Pat has Adam Thielen, and I'm going to go ahead and kick us off here. 
We finally saw Josh Gordon back on the field last year in week 13 after not seeing him on the field since week 16 of the 2014 season. In those five games, Gordon had 18 catches for 335 yards and a touchdown. The 18 catches weren't super impressive, but, you know, that isn't something that's real concerning to me since it was his first five, first five games in three years. One stat, though, was very good to see, and that was his yards per catch. Back in 2013, Gordon had 87 catches for 1,646 yards and nine touchdowns for an average of 18.9 yards per catch, and that was in his huge breakout season. Last season, Gordon's yards per catch was 18.6, which is very close to what it was back in 2013. Now, I know we're comparing a few years ago, but with Josh Gordon, that's all we have to go off of. When he finally got back to the lineup last year, he saw 43 of the 163 passing attempts that were made by Brown's quarterbacks. He, that means he saw 26.3% of all passes that were you know, thrown his way. Let's compare that to Antonio Brown, who had 27.7% of target shares in the Steelers offense last season. That's only a 1.4 percentage point difference. That's very close. Guess who else Josh Gordon and Antonio Brown have in common? That's Todd Haley. He was Antonio Brown's offensive coordinator last season, and he's Gordon's offensive coordinator this season. Todd Haley's wide receiver one has led the team in target shares by a very, very wide margin each season. In fact, here are the targets in Haley's offense that have gone to slot receivers over the last four years. 73, 79, 74, and 76 last season. Slot receivers have just not gotten very much use in Todd Haley offense play, uh, offensive play calling. Landry isn't, you know, going to be much of a threat. He's not going to take a ton of work from the wide receiver one based on Todd Haley's offense. And that is, you know, the slot is Jarvis Landry's specialty. In fact, only three teams last season even had two wide receivers with more than 100 targets. And that was the Detroit Lions, the Miami Dolphins, and the New York Jets. Now let's suppose that Gordon gets the same market share this season, so 26.3%, and Tyrod Taylor's the quarterback all year, and he throws the same amount of pass attempts as last season, which was 420. That would give Josh Gordon 110 targets, which would have been top 20 in targets for wide receivers last season. And that's if they only throw the ball 420 times. However, those 420 passes were in the Bills offense, which had a terrible wide receiver core. All right, let's go ahead and get into that rebuttal. All right, first off, I want to say that I'm pulling for Josh Gordon. It would be a shame if this dude couldn't overcome his substance abuse problems and let all of his talent go to waste. And obviously, there is a lot of talent here. It's a great story, and we all like sports stories about athletes who overcame personal obstacles. Now, I also understand that a lot of people think Josh Gordon is capable of recapturing the magic of 2013 when he was just an absolute monster and his fantasy numbers were completely mind-blowing. But that was five years ago. Since then, he's played all of 10 games, he scored one touchdown, and he's caught fewer than half his targets. And then you've got the situation in Cleveland. Uh, the QB situation might not be horrible, but it isn't exactly ideal with Tyrod Taylor keeping the seat warm for rookie Baker Mayfield. Taylor throws a nice deep ball, which could be good for Gordon, but isn't exactly super accurate on the shorter and uh, intermediate throws. And obviously, there's going to be a learning curve for uh, Mayfield once he gets in there, and he will be in there at some point. Uh, the Browns probably aren't going to score a great many touchdowns this season, so Gordon's TD upside is pretty limited, I think. And most people would probably agree that Hugh Jackson is, Jackson is a mediocre head coach at the very best. I think Gordon demonstrated last year that he can be very fantasy viable, but I don't think that we saw enough signs he has another 2013 season within his range of outcomes for 2018. And unfortunately, I think that's why Gordon is going to be overdrafted in a lot of leagues this year. People are still chasing the 2013. Uh, let's go ahead and take it over to Adam Thielen. Pat, kick us off here. All right, so Adam Thielen has a fantasy pros expert consensus ranking of wide receiver 12. I have him at wide receiver 14. So while I'm slightly lower on him than most of the other rankers, He's still a solid top 15 wide receiver for me, whereas Josh Gordon is not in my top 20. Thielen really started to come on late in 2016. He finished just short of 1,000 yards. And last year, he went well over the 1,000-yard mark with 91 catches for 1,276 yards. He was eighth in the league in receptions, fifth in the league in receiving yardage. Thielen has been incredibly efficient as a wide receiver. Uh, in his four years in the NFL, he's caught 67.4% of his targets, which is outstanding. But unlike the Jarvis Landry type possession receivers who don't average many yards per catch, 
Thielen has a relatively robust career average of 14 yards per catch. Now, as for his environment, the Vikings aren't going to spread the, the ball around to a ton of different guys. It's mostly going to be Thielen and Stefan Diggs with some Joe Rudolph, or, uh, Kyle Rudolph, excuse me, and Dalvin Cook mixed in. And look, Thielen could potentially be the number two receiver in this offense. Steph Diggs is an exceptional receiver in his own right. And if he can stay healthy, he could put up some really big numbers. But that's the thing. There's room for two re receivers to put up big numbers in this offense. And if there's a team that could support 2,000-yard guys, I think this is the one. And while some will see the QB transition the Vikings are going through as somehow detrimental to Thielen's value, I really don't think there's any denying the case. Keenum was terrific last year, but given his sort of modest pedigree, what are the odds of a repeat? I think the Vikings have a better chance of maintaining their proficiency in the passing game with Cousins. And I love the overall profile of this player. Uh, Thielen was an undrafted free agent out of Minnesota State, formerly known as Mankato State. He did a job lined up selling dental supplies if a career in pro football didn't work out for him coming out of college. But he worked his tail off in order to stick. And he's maintained that exceptional work ethic. The dude is just a gamer. Hasn't missed a game in his four NFL seasons. But Thielen isn't just some try-hard guy who's making the most out of marginal talent. He's 6'3", 200 pounds, big catch radius, pretty good speed for a bigger wide out. And so in summary, Thielen's now firmly established himself as a dependable, high-volume receiver. He plays on a good team in a stable offense, and his role is very secure in a team that doesn't spread the ball around that much. I think Thielen is one of the safest investments you can make in fantasy football this year, and to me, it's a no-brainer to take him ahead of goal. Boom. All right. Man, you timed that perfectly. <laughs> did nice. work out. Did you sit in the mirror and rehearse this over and over again? No, no. That was, <laughs> I'm just kind of guessing on the point. All right, I'm going to get into my rebuttal here. I'm going to start off by saying that I love Adam Thielen. I think he's a great player and he's in a great offense. However, he's in a great offense that has a ton of weapons with a quarterback who has been known to not only spread the ball around to his wide receivers, but also favor the tight end position more than his wide receiver one. In the last three seasons, Kirk Cousins has thrown to his tight ends as many or more times than his wide receiver one. This was not the case for the Bradford Keenum Bridgewater combo that the Vikings had last season. Adam Thielen got 143 targets compared to Kyle Rudolph's 89. That is not something that is characteristic of Kirk Cousins. I know that this expression is used way too often, and it's often used incorrectly uh, because it's so popular saying, but he is truly a quarterback that loves throwing to his tight ends, and Kyle Rudolph is a great tight end. If you're expecting Thielen to get 143 targets, along with his 1,200-plus receiving yards again, you may be disappointed. Last year's offense and quarterback was much more tailored to Thielen having a ton of targets than this one is, really because of Kirk Cousins. The Vikings ranked 23rd in passing attempts last season, which you'd think would have been higher after losing Dalvin Cook in Week 3. The Redskins were 17th in pass attempts uh, in an offense with a terrible one running game. With an offense that is very well balanced and even slightly favors the running game this season, a quarterback who spreads the ball around and loves his tight ends, and a healthy, fantastic pass-catching running back in Dalvin Cook, Thielen's target share could be due for some regression this year. <laughs> All right, before we move into final thoughts, I want to let you guys know that there are several ways that you can play fantasy football with us this season. First, the Sleeper Wire Pro-Am, where we have a bunch of pros and big names from around the fantasy football industry. You get a chance to play in a league with guys like Jake Seeley, Marcus Grant, Matt Harmon, and of course, Pat Fitzmorris, which is going to be awesome and a lot more as well. A one-time $30 donation gets you automatic entry into the Pro-Am. Additionally, we're going to be running four listener leagues where a $25 donation gets you automatic entry into those, and winners of the listener leagues will receive signed jerseys from Pristine Auction. Donations can be made through our website, sleeperwire.com, or through gofundme.com slash robjr. Right now, though, we're running a limited time offer where you can get automatic entry into both the Pro-Am and a listener league for $50 bucks instead of $55. All right, let's take it back to final thoughts here, and we're going to go back to Josh Gordon. As I was saying before the buzzer cut me off, uh, those 420 pass attempts by Tyrod Taylor were in the Bills offense, which you know had terrible wide receivers and only LaShawn McCoy as a weapon. Todd Haley offenses throw the ball significantly more. Overall, the Steelers threw the ball the six most times last season compared to the Bills, who were second to last. Gordon's 26.3% market share would have given him 155 targets in a Haley offense last season. Yes, Tyrod Taylor has never been a guy to huck the ball 600 times a season, but let's not forget there's a very good chance that the Browns will be starting Baker Mayfield before the end of the season, and he certainly is a passing quarterback. You actually said that 
Uh, Tyrod has a good deep ball, but he isn't super accurate. Mayfield, on the other hand, had a 70.5% completion rate last season at Oklahoma, which led the NCAA. He is a very accurate quarterback who loves to throw the ball. And he threw 43 touchdowns in 14 games last season uh, with only six picks. And let's also talk about the Browns offensive line losing Joe Thomas, the Hall of Fame offensive tackle. In theory, more defenders will be able to break through the line. No matter who is at quarterback, whether it's Tyrod or Baker, they're going to have to chuck the ball up in desperation at some point. It happens to every quarterback uh, that's in a bad offense. Guess who those downfield heaves are going to go to? Hint, it's not going to be Jarvis Landry. It's going to be the six foot three athletic freak who ran a 4-3 40-yard dash this past season. Josh Gordon is the definition of a downfield threat with huge potential. He's not necessarily a guy who has a safe floor, but he's a guy with a massive ceiling. So, yeah, you mentioned that uh, lack of a safe floor, and I guess that's sort of the elephant in the room here, Chris. Like, what if he has not overcome his substance abuse problems? You know, you always, I think, have to factor in that risk with a player like Gordon who's you know run afoul of uh, league uh, rules multiple times and has already endured a very long suspension. So the risk is, you know, a, a zero, nothing for him this season. And, um, you know, that's, that's a pretty big risk. And it's a, a scary thing. If you draft a guy like that in the third or fourth round, that could potentially take a major bite out of your team, uh, and just, you know, really dent your ability to put points on the board in a season long league. And just the fact that since he has been back in those 10 games, the one touchdown, the, the reception rate of under 50%, I just don't know if we have seen enough of the special Josh Gordon that we saw in 2013 when he was just seemingly operating at the height of his powers. Uh, I just feel more comfortable with a guy like Thielen, who is going to be efficient, who's produced that terrific catch rate catching basically two-thirds of all the targets that have come his way and with a very polarized uh a very polarized set of targets in minnesota yes uh rudolph might get quite a bit of work cousins does like throwing his tight ends but with really only digs there uh laquan treadwell has been a draft bust they brought in kendall rice who's just kind of you know been a third wheel at best and is not going to significantly dent the target load of either digs or Thielen. i just think you're much safer taking the guy who is sort of just locked in as that premium uh you know nine eight ten eleven target a game guy in a better offense on a better team and, uh, you know, I just think that you are looking at a, a classic safety versus risk proposition here. And, uh, you know, the way I, I like to play fantasy football, I want to minimize risk and Thielen would be my choice. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of The Great Debate. A couple last things before we go. I want to encourage you guys to go to sleeperwire.com. You can check out our weekly in-season rankings there, and you can also submit a question to the Sleeperwire crew. Please, please, please check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash sleeperwire, and see how you can pre-order the Sleeperwire Draft Genius Draft Kit, which will be coming out very soon. You can also get Sleeperwire merch like a mug and a t-shirt and automatic entry into the Pro-Am and Listener Leagues as well for, you know, a cheaper price than what you would pay for the donation. So check out the Patreon. It, uh, we are just giving a whole lot of stuff back for your generosity. You can also find us on Twitter at Sleeperwire Show. I'm on there at Seymour Sleeper Wire. So that's C-M-O-R Sleeper Wire. Pat is on there once again at Fitz underscore F-F. You can find me on Sleeper Bot at Professor Chris, the Fantasy Life at Professor Chris, and on Instagram at Professor Chris SW. Pat, where else can our listeners follow you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Fitz underscore F-F. Uh, you can find my articles and my podcasts on thefootballgirl.com and uh, my podcast fits on fantasy is available on itunes and soundcloud and i hope you'll subscribe and rate and review it yes everybody go subscribe to that today as soon as you hear this podcast thanks for listening guys we'll catch you next time